I have a problem. I love talking to people about music. I love showing my friends new artists I've found, no matter the genre, the band's level of popularity. I'm always interested in discussing music with people. The joy I get from showing a friend an album, them loving it, and turning them into fans of the given artist is immeasurable. It's honestly a huge part of why I make these videos to begin with. But as I said before, I have a problem. One of my favorite groups in all of music is admittedly pretty hard to talk about to the average person. For those who are completely unfamiliar and possibly terrified right now, this is Death Grips. This experimental hip-hop group from Sacramento, California is composed of rapper MC Ride, drummer, producer, songwriter Zach Hill, and recording engineer Andy Morin. I could honestly talk about this group for hours and hours, but I'm really trying to recruit some new fans, so I'm going to try to keep this short. I think Death Grips is important. To hip-hop, to music, to the ever-changing landscape of culture all around the world, and to better yourself as someone who consumes art, I really think Death Grips is important. For lack of a better word, Death Grips makes experimental music. As this definition would tell you, this group doesn't really have one genre that they stick to. MC Ride's verses tend to follow some kind of rhyming pattern and flow that you'd find in hip-hop, but the delivery is something else. His tortured voice is harsh and haunting, He's so incredibly aggressive, screaming these cryptic lyrics, that you typically expect to find this kind of vocalist to be in a screamo or a metal band. MC Ride's presence from song to song is probably the first thing that the average person would be intimidated by when first listening to Death Grips. In my opinion though, it's great to find a rapper or singer, whatever you want to call him, that puts such incredible emotion into his vocals. His malevolent presence, his ever-changing flows, Everything combines to create something truly unique in the hip-hop landscape. Check out one of my favorite verses from Come Up and Get Me off of No Love Deep Web. Can't tell hell with my hair 13th bell and my tear or in a style and feel for a step. Lying to myself, I buy myself, step down to my bed, tongue cut out the mouth of reason and choked off the river's edge. You might be wondering what's going on with that album cover. This is when you start to understand that everything about Death Grips is experimental, not just their frontman. This album cover features a picture that I literally can't show you in this video or else it would get flagged and taken down. Google its uncensored version at your own risk. This mindset of not caring about how mainstream media might perceive them stays consistent across the whole Death Grips brand, or lack thereof. It's the reasoning behind naming the first track off of government plates, and I quote, you might think he loves you for your money, but I know what he really loves you for. It's your brand new leopard skin pillbox hat. It's also the reasoning behind all of their music videos looking like these strange fever dreams. The video for Eh off of Bottomless Pit features this crazy animation editing. I don't even know what to call it. I see you coming, I'm just sucking life. Eh, my voice. Eh, see my reflection. Eh, invited, excited. Eh, eh. I've seen footage, probably one of my favorite Death Grip songs of all time, and one of the most accessible for introducing somebody to this group, is a music video that features thousands of still photos set to the beat. It's mesmerizing, puts me in a trance every time I watch it, and it's an interesting look into the day-to-day -day world of this band. Double Helix features MC Ride rapping in the wide angle, strange perspective of a car's safety cam. Inanimate Sensation is a video within a video on a Jumbotron surrounded by this weird stadium. And it wouldn't be a complete look at Death Grips without showing their most popular song of all time, and one of the creepiest, most uncomfortable videos for Guillotine. Hit it all between and beneath every fragmented figure of speech, talking reverse. 
I know I'm getting a little off track here, but isn't that incredible? Anyone that's willing to push the envelope of art and music so consistently, I can appreciate even if I'm not a fan of it. The fact that I do love a majority of Death Grips music is obviously what makes them so special to me. But going off of that, there is some stuff that is pretty unlistenable, even to me. But I think that's great. I'm not going to listen to everything they put out because they're sticking true to themselves and creating everything they want to create. With no regard, no censorship, nothing stopping them from pushing the boundaries. If you're curious, one of the best examples of something that I wouldn't really listen to from Death Grips is their song Hothead. Like, what was that? What is that video? What is that song? What are those instruments? What are those noises? What is Ride saying? I want to start to wrap this up, but I just want you to know that there's so much to love about this group. So if I've piqued your interest at all, here's a few miscellaneous things that I love about Death Grips. Their live shows are absolutely insane. I haven't been to one personally, but look at some of these clips. These guys put absolutely everything into their performances. They tend to break their instruments, and Zach Hill often drums so hard that he physically destroys his drums and hurts himself in the process. Andy Morin does live sampling, they do a lot of improvisation, and more. Look at MC Ride destroy an iMac in this clip. With a group so intense and so crazy, it might surprise you to hear how big of an impact they've had in other popular culture, that is, besides their huge, intense cult following. They've collaborated with Icelandic singer, songwriter, producer, and pop avant-gardist Bjork. They've featured award-winning actor Robert Pattinson, who's a super fan of the group, in their song Birds off of Government Plates. Here's a photo of them also with Beyonce, oddly enough. According to a longtime collaborator of David Bowie, Death Grips was a huge inspiration for his final album, Black Star, and they've had songs featured in everything from BoJack Horseman to Adidas commercials and Atlanta. Lastly, this is a small thing, but this is a group with a strong enough presence, interesting enough past, and a groundbreaking enough march through the music industry that a grad student out of Western University in Canada wrote a 141-page thesis on this group's mark on popular music and culture. It's really interesting, you should give a read if you want. I really don't know if this short explanation of Death Grips is going to make anyone a fan right away, but at the very least open your mind up and give them a chance. They have five studio albums and a few other releases, so there's plenty of music to check out. And they're reuniting for an upcoming album called Year the Snitch, so keep your eyes open. <laughs>